Today's episode of Podsky Outdoors comes to you from Western Washington, where we're out today with Dwayne England of Fish Hunt Northwest. You guys have all seen him for years. He used to be a radio show host. Now he's got his own radio and TV show, and he lives to fish. Today, he's fishing again near Westport for coho. Now, this is the time of year where coho are leaving the salt and migrating towards tributaries. There you go, I'm on a board. This is typically what we're getting out here in the salt water, uh, shallow water fish, and we're in about 20 feet of water, so 18 feet of water. That was a chartreuse brined red label herring. They like the small bait out here for the chartreuse. Potsky's fire brine chartreuse has been getting it done. This is a hatchery fish, no adipose fin, and uh, we can keep two a piece wild or hatchery. So we got five more to get. Here we go. Okay. Oh, nice fish. Whoa. Oh, just came loose. Oh boy. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Popped right out. That was on a. That was on the anchovy. That's a wild fish, it's got that adipose fin intact. A lot, uh, a lot brighter than our last fish, but you can see the quality of this fish out here, the shallow water green area, kicking out some really good quality fish. So that one was on a chartreuse anchovy out the back. All right, we're out here in the marine area today. We're fishing for coho in shallow water and we're using a variety of baits here. I got uh, some anchovy cured up in fire brine. Now this is mostly natural fire brine with just a splash of blue. And you can see with just hardly any blue in there, it actually adds quite a bit of blue. I'll also put in some Atlas Mike's uh, anise just to give a little different scent trail. And that is definitely working. I have some anchovy in the fire brine chartreuse. And I also have red label herring, which is your smaller herring, and green label herring, only because we're running out of red label. So they prefer a smaller bait out here. So we're mostly running these anchovies in the red label size herring. Uh, if we have to, we'll jump to the greens. Now, one thing I like to do, because we do have seaweed and eelgrass and stuff out here that can knock your bait off, uh, it works really well just to put them in a helmet. These Rice Davis helmets work fantastic. This is actually an anchovy helmet, but the red label fits into it just fine. So. We're gonna go ahead and stuff that herring in there, pin it through the head, drive that on through. Now it doesn't get real complicated with hooks in and out and, and trying to adjust and everything. I just like to drag this down three quarters of the way, stick it through the meat of the herring, grab a good, good amount of it there, and then a simple pull, put a little bend in that thing, okay? We have a broken off toothpick in the head right here in the helmet, which adds friction and holds that tension and keeps the bend in your hair. All right, let's dump it in the water and see how it spins. All right, let's dump it in the water and see how it spins. See that chartreuse brine coming off the back of it, putting that scent trail out. Oh yeah. This is a nice sized fish here. He does not want to come in exactly. There we go, another nice buck. Ooh, there we are. Hold on. Oh yeah. There you go. This is what this fishery can offer, man. Look at the quality on that coho. Wild fish, we can keep him out here. He's got the chartreuse fire brine on the side of his body. He hammered that herring. That's why we use that chartreuse out here. A little bit of dirty water, but I'm telling you, man, the UV and quality of chartreuse and how much it shows up down there on the bottom is amazing. Oh, fish, 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 fish. He's got center rod. Still there, yep, still there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, coming right up. There we go. 
Just a nice little buck. This one's got just a little hue of color to it, Brian. Most of these are dimers out here, but and a lot of the bigger bucks are starting to come in too. We're getting some 12, 13 pounders, but you know what? Any fish out here in the shallow marine water is gonna, is gonna work. Okay guys, real quick, just kind of the rigging of the day, what we've been using out here and finding success. Braided line, uh, 10 and a half foot edge rods, 1065, uh, 360 pros, and this is my little weed stopper in here. This thing works great just to help keep your gear clean. Braid, braid line, down to a uh, VIP, VIP sliding lock, which prevents line twist. That goes to a 12 inch dropper. Actually on these bait rods, Right off the bottom, up one crank, so we're using 20 ounces of lead just to get it down. That's a slider into our terminal end, which clips to our V-chain. I got a 24-inch bumper on here out of 200-pound test mono. It goes to our 11-inch YBC BMK flasher. Seems to be getting it done out here. Water's a little stained. Been utilizing this red silver flasher. Worked really well. I've shortened up my leaders because of the dirty water. Running about a 40 to 42-inch leader of 30 or 40 pound fluorocarbon to tie a dual hook, basically a mooching rig, into our Rice Davis helmet to protect the bait on the troll. And that's, that's the basic rig that we've been using out here day after day, finding success. Inline rotator out the back. You can see that rod thumping. I'm utilizing a 10 inch Rad's Revolutionary 360 flasher. On that one, I'll run a 30 inch leader and bait in the helmet, typically the anchovy. And that 30 inch leader on that 360 flasher gives that bait a tremendous amount of whip. Uh, and it really seems to work well. We're fishing this rod, or if I have two of them back here, suspend it up 24, 26, 28 feet on the line counter on 12 ounces of lead. Basically same setup, 360 flasher out the back, inline rotator on the front and it's been getting it done fish 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 get him you got him yep. nice The goal of Dwayne and his friends today is to intercept those fish as they come from the salt and head towards the tributaries. Now, all of their action today came on basically one bait, fire, brine, anchovies. You can see several different colors of them here. Dwayne's a big scent guy. He not only brined those baits, remember, fire brine does not have scent in it. So what he did is he added Atlas Mike's anise oil. The new anise lunker oil is thicker, it's stronger, it's better, and Dwayne loves it. He's done it for years. Now this fishery opened on September 16th. It'll run through October. As a matter of fact, Big D thinks it might actually run into the mid-November this year, depending on rain. If we get a ton of rain here in Western Washington, which hasn't been the case here in 2022, if we do get a ton of rain, those fish are gonna bolt up the streams. If we don't, they're gonna stay out here and mill around in this shallow water that Dwayne is talking about. Now, these coastal Chinook start anywhere about averaging around eight pounds. As you get into mid-October and into November, you could see a 10 to 12 pound average, if not larger. That's what's great about coming out here. You got great scenery, great fishing, and on a year like this year, lots of coho returning to the Washington coast. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.